What's good, YouTube? Your boy 21 here with part three of how to build a Yu Gi Oh deck. And on this portion of part three, we're going to talk about the trap portion of Yu Gi Oh deck, Yu -Gi -Oh deck because traps are your deck's defenses and they can be the determining factors are whether you win or lose a game. Now, granted, a lot of decks don't run traps or they run very few traps. A good example of that will be Light Sworn. Life Sworn is a competitive deck that basically revolves around milling, so a lot of its defenses are through monster effects like Tragodia and Necrogardener. But outside of the rare cases like um, Life Sworn, almost every deck is going to run about five to six traps on average. With that being said, since traps are the, your, your deck's defenses, they can be ran either, in either two ways. By negation or a Destruction way. Let's start on the negation way first because that's one of my favorites. Although I'm not running negation traps in my main deck right now. Negation traps are things such as Roar Decree, Trap Stun, Seven Tools of the Bandit, and the most recent popular, Wired. Negation traps are the traps that basically says your opponent cannot do X. Like, for example, Roar Decree says Trap cards cannot be aspect on the field. So, if your deck revolves around, let's say, being super aggressive with heavy beast based monsters, then Rare Decree might be the card for you. If not, you might want to run something like Sakurescent Armor or Dimensional Present or Mirror Force that says, when your opponent attacks, do X, Y, or Z. You get my drift? Now, we also have cards that can combo into regular decks like. Wiretap that can work in conjunction with cards like D Prism because, for example, Wiretap affects reads. When your opponent activates a trap card, you negate that card and return it back to your opponent's deck. And it's also a counter trap, meaning it can be used during damage step, and it can be changed to cards that 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 are like Solemn Warning that pay life points at its cost. Wiretap is good in decks like let's Gear Gear Karakuri because. While they also are super aggressive, they're very passive earlier in their turn, so they need to use defensive traps like Mirror Force, D Prison, and etc. to hold them off until they're ready to explode. And they need cards like Wiretap or Trap Stun, and even the OCG last year, Royal Decree. So when they do go off, they don't have to worry about none of their opponent's back row. Now, granted, a lot of decks don't play like that, but Gear Gears is one of the very few who do. And for the most part, a lot of players run. So, yeah, Wire Trap is the most popular right now, but a lot of players are running. Um, they run Trap Stun too, because the same concept as um, Wire Trap. Only difference is not a counter trap, it is a normal trap, and it basically and it basically reads negate the effects of all trap cards on the field for this turn. So, you flip it up, and then you just try to go for game. Or you can chain it to your opponent's cards that are chainable to. Now let's touch on the defensive traps. Defensive traps are things like Wabahu, Dimensional Prison, which is more popular right now. Um, Torrential Tribute, Bottomless Trap Hole. Those are all defensive traps. I'm gonna give you an example of there's two kinds of defensive traps. Ones that when your your opponent summons a monster, and ones when your opponent attacks a monster. The most flexible one you're gonna when building a deck, you gotta think about flexibility. And the most flexibility flexible ones are frankly the ones that when your opponent attacks with a monster, reason being the ones that activate when your opponent are summoned less like treasure tribute, bottomless, trap hole, solemn warning can only be activated when your opponent summoned, meaning you have to be able to set those up before you can use them. And if you go second, you open up with Trent Tribute, Bottomless Trap Hole, Trap Hole, and etc. And your opponent sets up a big field, well, you're going to be pretty much screwed because your cards are going to just, uh, sit there dead unless they react to them. And if they're a good player, they're not going to react to them. Which is why I say cards like Dimensional Prison and Mirror Force are always going to be good because they're flexible. They're good on either turn one or turn two, and they're not terrible top decks. They're really good top decks. So you want to have something that's going to be really good on the top deck that can get you out of a, bench, out of a pinch. Same reason Wabaku is good. If you play a deck that stalls, like Exodia, it's good on the top deck, it's good on turn one, and it's good on turn two. Very ethical and very, it's going to get the job done. There are also um, traps that 
like Prince Wayne Wingblast, that are good, are amazing turn one, amazing turn two, and can hit back row as well, but have cost. Now, cards that, like those that have cost, you honestly, in my, from what I, from my testing, you would just run it as a one of reason being, because even when in a deck like mine, it's gadgets that do accelerate good hand advantage. You really didn't want to minus a lot of a lot out of your hand because it can conflict to your deck's consistency, which will overall lead to you losing the game. So, due to that fact, you want to just keep your discarding outlets down to a minimum, when running things like Phoenix Wing Wing Blast and right right Gecky Break. Now, granted, a lot of players like Patrick Hoban does run those cards in two to three. And he does run in the mermaids, but from what I've seen, everybody who runs those cards, they always activate when they have one card less than their hand. It's like win more. And honestly, just because someone else runs it doesn't mean it's a good card. It just means that's something they like doing. They like opening up. Now, what traps are for you? Honestly, it all depends on the deck you're going to play. If you're playing super aggro aggressive, you might want to go the Roy Decree route where you're just blank and negate all trap and just go aggro for game and you defend with your monsters if you're gonna go like set up aggro like your gears you want to do a combo or oh, and chain gadgets too chain gadgets is kind of like a setup aggro deck you want to run things like trap stun so or wire tab where it's like you have your defense your, your defensive cards ready to stop their defenses and you also have your cards like dimensional prison and mirror to back you up and if you're playing something like Burn or Stall, then of course the Wobbuhoo is going to be good for you. But then again, Wobbuhoo can also be used in those aggro-aggressive decks. So when it comes down to traps, guys, it really th depends on how you want your defenses set up. And it also depends on how your monster and spell lineup is looking. Because traps are really, while they are one of the most important parts of the deck, they're just your deck's defenses. That's it. I mean, in some instances, like Reckless Greed, they can be a mini draw engine. But when you think about it, in a theory, in a theory, what theoretical way that can be, you you can be setting up for a card like Trigodia with Reckless Greed, or you can be using it as a defense to when you activate Reckless and then you can't draw for two turns. You using it to try to like defend yourself against your opponent's advantage. If that makes sense to you guys. So with all of that being said, I know this video was shorter than a lot of the other videos in the series, but traps are pretty much not that much to go into when it comes down to deck building for traps. You just got to know where your monster lineup is going around and your spell lineup is going around. And you use traps to fill out the weaknesses throughout your deck. So once again, if your deck is all super aggressive aggro and you have trouble back row, you might want to try to decrease. If your deck is like setup aggro, meaning you can't go off turn one or you don't want to go off turn one, you want to run something like Trap Stun or Wiretap. In, a, in, a, in addition to your cards like Mirror Force, Deep Prison, Turn to Tribute, when it comes to also running your defensive, tra your first turn traps or your set setup traps like TT and Bottomless Trap Hole, you really want to run a combination of both. For example, you want to have a lot of good traps that's gonna you're gonna be able to open up with turn one, but you also want to have something that's gonna be able to be used during their third or fourth turn. Quick play spells also play in, into this role too, but if you guys watched my last video, you already know that stuff like Book Moon, etc. So a good combination of things like Forbidden Lands, Deep Prisons in your deck, and then you have your good cards that are amazing turn one, it's ultimately leads you up to winning the game. And also, if you're running the stall decks, then just run the Wild Coup, the Threatening Roars, and you'll be fine. Well, guys, if you thought this video was informational, give it a thumbs up. Rate, comment, subscribe. This is Yellow 21 and I'm out. Deuces. Have a good day. The rest of the series will be out either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I know I've been slacking on a series, but I've been having a lot going on in my personal life right now. And I'm trying to finish up school, so everything's really hectic. All right, guys. You have a good night. Deuces.